Hey guys, let's discuss current affairs. Today's first question relates to the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee of the RBI to keep the main interest rate, that's repo rate, unchanged. And that was kept at 6.5%. Um, you know, the repo rate, as you would understand, um, is the rate, is the interest rate charged by RBI on short-term loans to commercial banks. Simply put, repo rate is the interest rate charged by the RBI on short-term loans to the to com the commercial banks. Now you may understand, you may get, you know, you may speculate as to what's short-term. How short is short-term? Well, anything in economic, any in economics, anything below one year is considered short-term. Okay, because they say that in the long run we are all dead. Okay, now we need to appreciate the fact that uh, short term is less than one year and in this case repo rate which is the rate of interest charged by the RBA when it lends to commercial banks is 6.5%. Now sometimes the RBA, RBA may borrow from, uh, you know, might borrow from commercial banks, from the commercial banks. In that case commercial banks also charge PISA, charge interest, what's the interest? Uh, it's called reverse repo. Reverse repo. So, reverse repo is the rate of interest charged by commercial banks on uh, short-term loans to the RBI. Okay. So, and that is at currently at 3.35 percent. 3.35 percent. So, repo rate 6.5 percent. Reverse repo at 3.35 percent. Now, there is something called bank rate. Bank rate is um, interest rate charged by the RPI on long-term loans to commercial banks. Long-term is a key word. Anything more than a year's time is long-term, considered long-term in economics. So here, bank rate is 6.75%. Uh, to repeat, rep, rep, uh, repo rate is 6.5%, reverse repo is 3.35%. And of course, um, you know, if you're looking at um, uh, bank rate it is 6.75% uh, now there is a key term there bimonthly what's bimonthly bimonthly is once every two months in some places you may find this to mean you find you may find the meaning to be you know once every two you know once uh, rather twice every month twice every month it cannot be twice every month because twice every month uh, would mean that once every 15 days, uh, which would technically mean a fortnightly. A fortnight is a two week period. So in that case, something that is that happens once every two weeks is called fortnightly. F-O-R-T-N-I-G-H-T-L-Y, fortnightly. Okay, so once every two months is bi-monthly, once you know something that happens um, you know um, once every fortnight or uh, once every two weeks is fortnightly okay so that's essential difference actually um, i guess that's about it but could we learn a little more here yes uh, who are the members of the monetary policy committee it has six members three experts three from within the rbi its chairperson is always Shaktikanta Das, the RBI governor, R not always Shaktikanta Das, always the RBI governor. To repeat, the Monetary Policy Committee's six members are one, Governor Shaktikanta Das, two, Dr. Rajiv Ranjan, deputy, Dr. Rajiv Ranjan, next three, Dr. Michael Debaprata Patra. Michael Debaprata. D E B A B R A T A. Debaprata Patra. P A T R A. Michael Debaprata Patra. Next. Next. Professor Jayant Verma. Professor Jayant Verma. Next, Dr. Sashanka Bhide, Sashanka Bhide, B-H-I-D-E, Bhide. Next, the last name, Dr. Ashima Goyal, Dr. Ashima Goyal. 
so we have had the names six names one dr governor dr sorry governor shaktikanta das to michael debavrata patra before the that name you take the name of dr rajiv ranjan uh, fourth we took the name of uh, professor jayant verma fifth name we wrote down was uh, that of the dr uh, sashanka bhide and in the end we wrote the name of uh, um, dr ashima goyal that's about it now the rate has been rising since for you know uh, since um, about 12, 12 months now uh, but why has the rbi been raising interest rates the rbi has been raising interest rates primarily to bring down inflation the projected inflation rate for financial year 24 which means the one that started on the 1st of april 2023 and that will end, and the one that would end on 31st of march next year to repeat one that starts on um, you know one that starts on 31st uh, sorry one that started on 1st Mar- uh, april i'm so sorry i said march i guess first april 2023 and that which would end on 31st march next year so finance the, the in short financial 23 24 is called fy24 so for the target inflation is 4% plus or minus 2 but currently it is at you know uh, you know speculated or projected inflation is 5.1% for the entire financial year okay currently it is around um, you know 4.6 per now 5% something so well within the target range but then the are we still worried that this may spiral out of control so we need to keep a tight leash on this and this we can do by keeping the interest rates high if interest rates are high loans would become expensive people would not borrow much people would, people don't borrow much uh, there won't be spending so if spending is curbed the demand is reduced if the demand is reduced um, automatically the prices would decrease and thereby inflation would dec- you know come down that side okay and this particular uh, bi monthly meeting in june also talked about the real gdp now what's real gdp nominal gdp includes you know budget for the rise in prices so what happens is from the nominal gdp inflation rate is directed what you get is real gdp that's a real growth in you know economic output so the projected real gdp of financial year um, you know financial year 24 is 6.5% 6.5 percent so i went through the entire document the rbi release and everything so it mentioned 6.5 percent to be the um, real gdp for the for the current financial year okay so from here let's go to the next one on 15th june the global wind day was celebrated by the ministry of new and renewable energy identify the current statements about wind energy in india now all mentioned here all things mentioned here uh, we are the fourth in wind power capacity in the world but that's not important what's important is that uh, we are a large country we have great potential but uh, you know wind uh, power you know powering wind wind vanes wind mills and all that very 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 expensive and there is always this entire thing about uh, how do we you know uh, once uh, blade the three blades that you find around a wind uh, vane or wind mill you know they 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 exhaust their life uh, where do we park them that is where do we put them they are not biodegradable for all that we care about they are not biodegradable so we need to look for land fields where we could actually put them inside the earth actually hmm? let's see where it goes as of today uh, the number one state in india in terms of wind energy installed capacity is tamil nadu with a little under you know 9000 megawatts uh, second is gujarat about little under um, 8000 that's about i think 7800 megawatts and then in the third place is um, maharashtra Maharashtra so second is Gujarat third is Maharashtra one Tamil Nadu two Gujarat three Maharashtra okay now who is uh, union minister for new and renewable energy it is Raj Kumar Singh you could write the name Raj Kumar Singh the union minister of new and renewable energy Raj Kumar Singh you could also write uh, you know one more name Uh, one more ministry to you know and in his portfolio that is a ministry of power ministry of power 
The Right Livelihood Awardee Daniel Ellsberg, who passed away recently at the age of 92, I guess, uh, was associated with the Pentagon Papers exposing Vietnam War secrets. See, Vietnam War took place between um, the Viet Cong, V I E T, Viet Cong, C O N G, who were communist, you know, um, you know, co communist forces um, who wanted to not only who by you know um, uh, in the early 1950s had overtaken uh, had taken over the country of North Vietnam. Now they wanted to take over South Vietnam, which in those days was a monarchy, and the Americans didn't want that to happen. So the Americans jumped in. So in 1955, between 1955 and 74, the Vietnam War took place, and in this period, millions of Vietnamese died. Vietnam locals died. We are not just Viet in Vietnam did people die. Uh, Laos, the western you know, neighbor of uh, Vietnam, you know, also saw thousands of casualties. People died in large numbers due to American bombing and of course the landmines planted by the Viet Cong uh, forces. Ultimately in the mid 70s, um, America admitted defeated and withdrew from Vietnam. And either the Viet Congress or Viet Cong as they were called, took over the entire country, merged south with the north and turned that into entire, you know, communist country. Even today, Vietnam is a communist country, okay? It's pretty much like China, single party authoritarian state, uh, but uh, both China and Vietnam don't see eye to eye. Whereas in the, 90, in the Vietnam War of 1955 to 74, it was the Chinese forces that supported the communist forces in the north against the Americans, okay? But then, you know, um, why did the, what were these papers, Pentagon papers? This was a study conducted by the Pentagon, which is the American Defense Establishment. You know, um, these papers revealed uh, that the American government had, at the time was, there was this guy called, uh, you know, Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson, American presidents, Lyndon Johnson, followed by Richard Nixon, two guys who were, more or less systematic, you know, who were involved in cover-up. What was the cover-up about? The Pentagon Papers had clearly stated that the American government had lied to the U.S. public, to the U.S. Congress, that is the American Parliament, and the U.S. Supreme Court. So, not only did they lie, they lied, you know, systematically over years. This is a kind of betrayal of the trust that Americans people have had in their have had in their government. Daniel Ellsberg, as the photograph, the guy in the photograph in the 1970s, shot in the 70s, he pulled out these papers and he got them published through the New York Times. They were serialized in New York Times, and these papers revealed that the American government had lied about the scope of the war that the American government has systematically enlarged the scope of the war, you know, uh, in terms of the military budgets, in terms of the ammunition used, in terms of the people's, you know, the forces sent over. So finally, you know, he was indicted, you know, he was um, uh, released from, you know, from the numerous court cases filed against him by the U.S. government under Espionage Act, under, you know, Official Secrets Acts and everything. But then, you know, he died recently. I have read his book, yeah, I have read his papers, I have read the Pentagon Papers, and um, I have read this before he, this particular, this week, in fact, I read last week, uh, because last week uh, there was an article on a particular website which was about Daniel Ellsberg. Okay, there's a lot to learn, my friends. There's a lot to learn. And it's our job to learn these things. Okay. Uh, with which European country did we, India recently agree to set a target for bilateral trade from the present 32 crores to $1 billion? 1 billion euros, uh, 32, you know, from 32 euros, 32 crore euros to 100 crore euros by the end of the decade. Serbia, this is Serbia. Where is the cursor? This is in brown here. You see this? Serbia. Okay. 
the capital in Serbia is a very small country. It's always typically at odds with the European Union. Though it's a member of the European Union, it doesn't agree to a lot of things that the European Union has dished out in recent times, especially like, you know, its decisions in the, in the, in the Ukraine case where they have imposed hundreds of sanctions against the Russians. But the Serbians say that sanctions won't work and you can't tell us that we can't buy oil and gas from Russia. We need it. We can't, we are not rich enough to buy like you are buying from outside, you know, uh, the normal sources, the usual sources like Russia. You have the money. We don't have the money, my friends. Yeah. So we'll buy from where we can afford. Well, uh, Serbia's capital is Belgrade, as you can see here, B-E-L-G-R. Let's write two, three things about, two things about Serbia. Um, capital is Belgrade, B-E-L-G-R-A-D-E, -E, Belgrade. Two, the president, Alexander Vukic, Alexander Vukic, V-U-C-I-C. V U C I C. Okay. Its currency is dinar, Serbian dinar, D I N A R, D I N A R. Next, Spain. This is Spain. In the Iberian Peninsula, you see this region here, it's a peninsula region. Okay. This peninsular region comprises Portugal, um, you know, what is this, uh, Spain, and of course, there is this tiny country here called Andorra, A-N-D-O-R-R-A, -R -R Andorra. So, Portugal, Spain, and Andorra. This is on the border, with, you know, uh, with uh, Spanish border with France. Very tiny country. So, these three countries make the Iberian Peninsula, I-B-E-R-I-A-N, Iberian. Fair. Now, Spain's prime minister is... Um, Pedro Sanchez, Pedro, P E D R O, Pedro Sanchez, S A N C H E Z, Sanchez, Pedro Sanchez. Okay. Euro is a currency. Italy, this is Italy. Finger like thing. Hmm? The island of Sardinia, you have Sicily, hmm? Italy here. So you could write this. Italy, um, the prime, the capital is Rome, R O M E. You know this. The prime minister is is lady named Giorgia Meloni. She met the prime minister, Indian prime minister, recently. Giorgia, G I O R G I A. Giorgia Meloni, M E L O N I. Okay. The currency is euro. Cyprus, you see this tiny country here? Uh, it's not mentioned. Oh, it's, yeah, I think in the map it's not there, but you go slight west uh, of the west of the west coast of, in fact, there is no east coast of Lebanon. Um, in west eastern Mediterranean, slightly, you know, just below what we call Turkey and west of Lebanon, you'll find this country called Cyprus whose capital is Nicosia, N-I-C-O-S-I-A, Nicosia, Nicosia, uh, yeah, Nicosia, and the, Nicosia, the Prime Minister here is Nikos, N-I-K-O-S, Nikos, I repeat, N-I-K-O-S, Nikos, Christotolidis, I'll spell, C H R I S T O D O U L I D E S. So C H R I S T O D O U L I D E S. Christodolidis. Currency is Euro. Greece. This country in brown you see here. This is in, you know Greece. Greece. Uh, Greece's um, capital is Athens, A T H E N S, Athens. And the prime minister is Ion, Ion, Ionis, I'm so sorry, Ionis Samers. I, I'll spell it for you. I O A N N I S. I O A N N I S. Ionis 
सैमर्स एस ए एम ए आर एस आई थिंक दैट शुड बी The Indian team, comprising 280 members, including 198 athletes, uh, will compete at the Special Olympic Summer Games, which will be held at Berlin, Germany. Berlin, Germany. What are special economic, uh, Special Olympic Summer Games? You could write this. Um, for parties, for participants with intellectual disabilities, for participants with intellectual disabilities. For participants with intellectual disabilities. Next, takes place. The event takes place. Not take place. If you're talking of plural, in plural. Every two years, every two years, and alternates between, and alternates between summer and winter. Games, summer and winter Olympic games, summer and winter Olympic games. Hmm. Hey, by the way, this is for twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty seven will be held at Perth. This is whatever I mean. This is Perth. Perth is in Australia on the west coast of Australia. Uh, Perth twenty twenty seven. some special some uh, olympic summer games then look at choice 2 hangs out 2031 2031 with which international lending institution did india sign a 130 billion dollar loan to promote horticulture growing of fruits vegetables and all in uh, himachal pradesh where the you know which is mountainous hilly area you know the answers mentioned there so the the head office of asian development bank is in manila m a n i l a manila i'll repeat manila m a n i l a manila m a n i l a manila which is the capital of the philippines philippines p h I L I P P I N E S. You know this is this country is named after a Spanish king named Philip the Second. Philip the Second. So Philippines' country currency is peso, P E S or peso. But we are not worried about Philippines. We are looking at Asian Development Bank, whose president is. Masat Sugu Asakawa. Masat Sugu. M A S A T A. Sorry. M A S A T S U G U. Masat Sugu Asakawa. A S A K A W A. Asakawa. Masat Sugu Asakawa. Choice one, New Development Bank. Let's look at the head offices. Usually, we look at all this information. New Development Bank is headquartered in Shanghai, Shanghai. World Bank, what? And International Monetary Fund. So, choices two and five are both headquartered in Washington D.C. Washington D.C., the American capital. Washington D.C. Look at four. Choice four. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is headquartered in Beijing, the Chinese capital. B E I J I N G, Beijing. Which Indian company was ranked first in Asia and among the top ten companies globally in the renewable energy sector by I S S E S G? Okay, why don't we write first? Uh, when we say renewable energy and all that, what exactly? uh do we mean by this okay the answer is already mentioned there but before we write about uh, lead and all just write our adani green energy chairperson sorry md or ceo is vinith jain vinith jain vinith jain
So the idea here is that these countries, these companies are ranked on the basis of what is called lead categorization. Lead is leadership in environmental and energy design. Sorry, leadership in energy and environmental design. Leadership in energy and environmental design. Okay. So, see, these companies have been ranked on the basis of their in energy initiatives, like you know, net zero or net positive. Net zero is where whatever emission, carbon dioxide emission happens through their operations, you know, through technology, they not only minimize, they not only make it, they not only make turn that into a positive, they actually produce more positive carbon, basically. You know, in fact, it's it's quite difficult, except for the, you know, uh, those companies which are engaged in this kind of business, because uh, clean technology is very, very expensive. And those of you who don't know, the full form of ESG is, Environmental, social and governance. Environmental, social and governance issues. Not a question that I would like to spend a little more time on. Sheikh Ahmed Nawaf Al Sabah was recently appointed Prime Minister of Kuwait. This is Kuwait, my friends. You see this country? In this uh, country was in was occupied by Saddam Hussein's Iraqi army in 1990. Yeah, the Iraqi military under Saddam Hussein, who had come to power the previous year, that is in 1979. So I'm so sorry. Uh, in the previous, uh, I think. Let me tell you a story here. Saddam Hussein came to power in 19. 79. He captured power through a military coup, C O U P. Okay. Now there was no election or anything. He just dismissed the elected government. He came in place. Okay. Now remember, this is significant because he was a Sunni Muslim. Whereas Iraq is populated in majority by Shia Muslims. Nearly 68% of Iraqi population practices Shia Islam. Okay. Now the same year. In neighboring country of Iran, in the neighboring country of Iran, there was an Islamic revolution, which saw the coming to power of the Shia military, you know, Shia clerics, mullahs. Mullahs came to power in Iran. They threw out the Raja who was provest. So Iran saw the installation of a hardline anti-West government in Iran, you know, in 1979. The same year. A Sunni captured power in predominantly Shia Iraq. The next year in 1980, both the countries went to war against each other and they were they engaged in this war for eight years. Though it more or less ended in a stalemate, a draw, it is generally believed that Iraqis um, had the upper hand. In 1990, Iraq under Saddam occupied Kuwait. This is the story, you know, the occupation, everything happens, you know, you could learn through this, through the story of this, through the movie Airlift, starring Akshay Kumar. Mm. So, but then a coalition force led by America, 14 country coalition force, UN force, led by the Americans, destroyed the Iraqis and a few days later, they had to vacate, they had to vacate occupied territory of Kuwait. Hmm. So Kuwait is capital is Kuwait city as you can see here Kuwait city and uh, this is the prime minister but it's a kingdom and so the Raja is very powerful. You could write the name of the Raja. Nawaf the same thing Nawaf here Nawaf Al Ahmad Nawaf Al Ahmad Al Zabair J A B E R Al Zabair Nawaf Al Ahmad Al Zabair Al Sabah Al Sabah The Sabah family is a ruling family of Kuwait. Okay. He's a king of Kuwait. This is Lebanon. You see here, tiny country here. This one, Beirut and all that. Lebanon's prime minister is 
नजीब मिकाटी नजीब मिकाटी एम आई के ए टी आई आई थिंक इट्स नजीब मिकाटी आई करेक्ट माई सेल्फ इफ आई मीन करेक्ट नेक्स्ट क्लास आई टेल यू इन द मीन वेल यू चेक ओके जॉर्डन दिस इज जॉर्डन इन ग्रीन इट्स टिपिकली प्रो वेस्ट प्रो सऊदी अरेबियन कंट्री एंड जॉर्डन Raja is Abdullah the second. Abdullah the second, Roman numeral two. Then Bahrain. This is an island here. Okay, Bahrain's capital, as you can see here, is Manama. M A N A M A. Manama, and its um, Raja is Hamad. H A M A D. Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Hamad bin Isa. B I N bin. Bin means son of. So Hamad, son of Isa, I S S A, Isa, bin Khalifa, bin Khalifa, Al Khalifa, otherwise, Al Khalifa. Uh, that's about it, I guess. The United Arab Emirates. It also has a prime minister, but uh, we'll not take the name of the, the prime minister there, Rashid Al Maktoum. Let's write the name of the. The capital is Abu Dhabi. U A E's capital is Abu Dhabi. United Arab Emirates. Capital is Abu Dhabi, and the king on king and the president is the same guy here. Is Zayed Zayed bin Muhammad Zayed bin Muhammad Al Nahyan Al Nahyan A L Al Nahyan N A H Y A N Al Nahyan. According to the U.S. GBC and GBCI, which country ranks first in lead zero certified green building projects? India. India is world number one in environmental consciousness, constructions and all. Let's write the full forms of lead. And you don't require U.S. GBC. United States Green Building Council. Green Building. Um, what is it? Green Building Certification Incorporated is GBCI. You don't require that. You do require the full form of lead, leadership in leadership in energy and environmental design. Leadership in energy and environmental design. Next. So, how many buildings did India have? Seventy-three. Yeah, seventy-three. Second is US with forty-seven projects. Forty-seven. Um, China comes in third with fifteen one five. So India is a world leader in green certification, hmm? green building certification. Which Indian writer was awarded the forty-fifth European Essay Prize for lifetime achievement by the Charles Wellen Foundation? Arundhati Roy. Uh, she is. Um, I'm not a political guy, but I can tell you what she writes about. Everything that is anti BJP, yeah. See, it's very easy to locate this kind of bias in the, the writings of Arundhati Roy. She is, um, uh, she is also the niece of um, Pranav Roy, who owned NDTV at one point and uh, who was always, uh, you know, the NDTV channel was anti BJP and all that. So, you know, there is always a bias in media. What you read could confirm your bias, or sometimes people like me who read everything. I read everything. The Hindu, which is typically pro-leftist, um, you know, uh, if you watch Republic TV, you know it's pro-rightist actually. So if you read, if you read, if you, if you uh, read Swaraj magazine, which is pro-right, okay. So you get you cover a spectrum of issues. You know, you, you don't need to get carried away by politics and all that. See, everyone has an agenda. My agenda as your teacher is to learn. My agenda as your as a student of learning is to learn and become familiar. Oh, this is it. Aha, uh -huh, kind of thing. Yeah, we can't be fighting with people over politics. It's they're just opinions. Okay, so Arundhati Roy wrote this uh, novel called The God of Small Things, for which she received the Booker Prize in 1997. You could write this: winner of 1997 Booker Prize for for The God of Small Things. The God of Small Things. See, I have read all of these guys. I have books by all of them. In fact, I have three books of Kiran Desai's mother, Anita Desai. Okay, 
But I can tell you one thing. Arundhati's Arundhati Roy's book was was deeply criticized in Britain, where the Booker Prize is given. Okay. In fact, one jury member had gone on to one previous year's jury member, 1996 jury member, had um, Booker Prize jury member had said the book was execrable, means not worth the paper written on and other things. It's, it deeply divided the literature world, actually, the literary world. To each their own. Yeah, it's a pretty ordinary story. Nothing extraordinary about it. It's quite bleak, quite sad about you know a particular family in Kerala. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, she once described the Nexels in India as Gandhi with guns. Gandhians with guns. No, that would be insult to Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> but that's what she did. Ah, more than her, you should read people like Vikram Sait. And for good measure, you should also read Chetan Bhagat. You should read the spectrum of things. Hmm? Vikram Sait is a great author of books like A Suitable Boy. A Suitable Boy. Suitable Boy is considered one of the longest English novels of the last 200 years. The book, the one that I have at home, I yesterday saw it, um, had, has uh, 1,349 or 50 pages. That's a lot of pages. <laughs> the story is 1349 kind of pages. So in multiples of four, they actually published this. So you would have three more blank pages kind of thing. But amazing book. Hmm? Kiran Desai, she won the Booker Prize um, in 2006. Uh, you write the name of the book, uh, Kiran Desai, The Inheritance of Loss. The Inheritance of Loss. L-O-S-S, Loss. Chetan Bhagat, very good, interesting writer. Many people, those who claim to be very serious literature fans, they say, oh man, he writes pretty ordinary stuff. Yeah, it's for the common people, not for literary fans like us. <laughs> I have read all kinds of people. I have read all the books of Seth Vikram Seth. In fact, I have all the books of Vikram Seth. Okay? I have all the books of Vikram Seth. He has written books like, um, you know, A Suitable Boy. The Golden Gate is a novel which is in verse form, poem form. It is about, uh, The Golden Gate is a bridge in San Francisco. Yeah? And, um, you know, uh, he's also written a travelogue. Uh, from Heaven Lake, that's the name of the book in Tibet. From Heaven Lake, so you can, you should read everything. I mean, there's nothing called it bad, good. Uh, yeah. It's just reading and learning. Hmm? Yeah, sometimes some books are not worth your time. I understand, but a lot of books are fun. Like Chetan Bhagat's books are fun. A good book would be Two States. There is a movie also, Arya Bhatt, starring Arya Bhatt, and I think it is. Uh, Varun no, not Varun Dhawan, someone like Sid, or Ditya Roy Kapoor or someone. I don't remember the actor, of course. The actress is Alia Bhatt. Hmm? Arvind Adiga, oh man, nice stuff. Uh, he won the Booker Prize in 2008 for the book um, The White Tiger. The White Tiger. The White Tiger. Yeah. Please read. Reading is a joy. India recently participated in the NHC or NSC International Animation Festival for the first time. The event was hosted, always hosted by France, primarily because it's held in the town of NSC, which is in France. Okay, so not much to discuss here, but I can tell you what are the capitals of these places. Poland's capital is Warsaw, W A R S A W. W A R S A W Warsaw. See, this is not a great film festival, so I'm not going to discuss who won what and all that stuff. Poland's capital is Warsaw. W A R S A W. And if you want the name of the president, Andrzej Duda. Andrzej Duda. D U D A. France capital is Paris, as you know, and the president is um, Emmanuel Macron. M A C R O N Macron. Belgium's uh, constitutional uh, monarchy, the prime, the, the capital is Brussels, B R U S S E L S, Brussels, and the uh, 
Prime Minister is Alexander De Croo. Alexander D E D Crew C R O O Crew Alexander D Crew. Okay. Britain, you don't require. What is the new fellowship program launched by the government of India to connect the Indian science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and medicine diaspora with Indian academic and R and D institutions? Diaspora is the presence of Indians in different parts of the world. In fact, the word diaspora is specific to the presence of Jews around the world. Okay, um, though now it's being used by all kinds of people, all nations whose nationals are abroad basically. Okay, Indians abroad typically would make Indian diaspora. Okay, so you would find that um, the idea is to bring persons of Indian origin or people associated with Indians with India somewhere, bring them in and connect them with India's R&D institutions, academic institutions, so that our risk, level of research, our, you know, our, our, our understanding of technology or their strengths could be used, could be leveraged to build better technology in India, a better you know, uh, R&D base in India. Some of the other initiatives have been happening and it is a good thing. The answer is Vaibha because Vaibha stands for Vaishik Bhartiya Vaignanik. You could write this Vaishvik Bhartiya Vaignanik. Vaishvik Bhartiya Vaignanik. Okay, not much to discuss again. Hmm? The Nehru Memorial Museum and Library Society, an autonomous body under the Government of India, will be renamed as the Prime Minister's Museum and Library Society. Now, you know, this was called Nehru Memorial Museum and everything. Now, the thing is that the Congress has been blasting, has blasted the government for renaming what's named after Nehru. But who established it? Do you know who established it? It was established by Lal Bahadur Shastri in 1964. 1964. At the time, the great Lal Bahadur Shastri became Prime Minister. You need to understand that we, we have had only one Prime Minister in, in, in independent India. So it was called Nehru. It was named after Nehru. Okay. Now, the current government says, why just Nehru? We can, this particular, you know, place, which is see, this memorial museum is in Teen Murthy Bhavan. Where is it? Teen Murthy Bhavan, which is, I think, um, in uh, you know, Teen Murthy Bhavan actually has a three faced statue. Actually, anyway, some other time in the story. Uh, the Teen Murthy Bhavan was also the official residence of, uh, was not the official, was a residence of Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru. But then that has been since been converted into Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. And the current government says this. Museum showcases not just Nehru's contributions and his life and times, but also other prime ministers. So it would be fit if we rename the institution Prime Minister's Museum and Library in Society. So the Congress is up against uh, the government's move to rename it on a neutral ground. He didn't see. The current government didn't call it Narendra Modi Museum and Library Society. They call it Prime Ministers. Whoever becomes Prime Minister, well, Prime Minister. But then politics has its own weird ways. Hmm? It was started in 1964 by Lal Badur Shastri okay, in Teen Murthy Bhavan. Which nation will host the NATO's largest ever Air Force deployment exercise called the Air Defender 23? Germany. This is more, more or less NATO. So NATO um, currently has 31 members. NATO has 31 members, but 25 participated in this election, you know, in this exercise, and um, 25 plus Sweden. Sweden recently became a member of NATO, so you know it still you know, came in. Hosted by Germany, participants and 25 NATO members, North Atlantic Treaty Organization members. As you know, NATO was started as a military alliance in 1949. 19. 49. Originally it had, I think, 12 members. Now there are 31 members. 
Its secretary general is a guy called Jens Stoltenberg. Jens, J E N S, Jens. I repeat, J E N S, Jens. Stoltenberg, S T O L T E N B E R G. Stoltenberg, Jens Stoltenberg. He is from Norway. He is ex prime minister of Norway. Okay. Hey, by the way, anything else? We write written about each of these countries. Which Indian city is the most expensive Indian city? Much expensive for expatriate foreigners working in India and has been ranked at one forty seven in the Mercer's two thousand twenty three cost of living survey. So India's most expensive city for foreigners working in India. Would be Mumbai, rank one forty seven. So India's most expensive is Mumbai, one forty seven. Next is New New Delhi, New Delhi, twenty nine plus. So twenty two plus one sixty nine, rank one sixty nine. New Delhi, third Chennai, one eighty four, one eighty four. So Mumbai, one forty seven. New Delhi one sixty nine, Chennai one eighty four. Top three most expensive cities for expatriates. Okay, um, coming to least expensive Indian city for expatriates. It's Pune. P U N E Pune. Rank two one three. Rank two one three. So this is India. Now what about worldwide? Three most expensive worldwide or global three most expensive cities for expatriates. You could write this: global three most expensive cities for global three most expensive cities for expatriates. One, Hong Kong, which is part of China, as you know. Hong Kong. Two, Singapore. Singapore. Three, Zurich, Z U R I C H, Zurich, Z U R I C H, Zurich, in brackets, Switz, uh, yeah, Switzerland. Next, Switzerland, Austria, all of these are pretty close to each other. Next. Least expensive for expatriates, just one city. Least expensive, Islamabad. Islamabad. Rank two to seven. Rank two to seven. Global rank two to seven. So two twenty seven cities were ranked. India's least expensive for foreigners is Pune, two one three. Global, it's Islamabad in Pakistan. Two twenty-seven. Okay. The U.S. will rejoin the UNESCO in July two thousand twenty-three. The headquarters of the UNESCO is at Paris, France. The full name of UNESCO is um, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Let me repeat: United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Head office Paris in France. Secretary General is Audrey A U D R E Y Audrey Azule A Z O U L A Y Azule I repeat A Z O U L A Y Let's look at the choices here Geneva Switzerland is home to Plenty of bodies. World Trade Organization, right? World Trade Organization. World Trade Organization. Choice three. Rome, Italy is home to Food and Agricultural Organization. Food and Agricultural Organization. Madrid, Madrid, Spain. I think there is a body here called World Tourism Organization. If I'm incorrect, I'll correct myself. But I recall that one. World Tourism Organization. 
न्यूयॉर्क यूनाइटेड नेशंस यूनाइटेड नेशंस सो डोंट राइट यू एन जस्ट राइट यू एन बिकॉज देर इज नो ओ इन द नेम ऑफ यू एन The World Day Against Child Labour is observed on June twelfth every year. The theme for this year is social justice for all and child labour. Very tough, very very tough. Anyway, um, World Day Against Child Labour is observed on so and so. Fair. This is June twelfth. Right, two three days in June. One June first that is World Milk Day. June first is World Milk Day. June seventh, you know, June fifth is World Environment Day. June seventh is World Food Safety Day. June seventh is World Food Safety Day. World June eighth is World Oceans Day. World Ocean Day. World Ocean Day. June twentieth. I am telling you four five days that I remember right now, June twentieth, World Refugee Day, Refugee Day, June twenty first, International Day of Yoga, International Day of Yoga, In which state did the Comptroller and Auditor General of India host a host a three day Supreme Audit Institutions 20 Summit. SAI stands for Supreme Audit Institutions. Supreme Audit Institutions Summit under India's G20 Presidency. It was in Goa. And who is India's CAG? You could write this name, and then we can go to the next question. India's Comptroller and Auditor General is Girish Chandra Murmu. Girish Chandra Murmu, M U R M U. Girish Chandra Murmu. Um, you also need to appreciate that uh, the C A G is the highest audit officer of the government of India. He audits all government ministries, all government departments, all public sector units, and if necessary, private sector companies. Civil okay. yeah. Silvia Berlusconi, who passed away recently, was former Prime Minister of Italy. He was a PM of Italy on four different occasions, four different occasions in the nineties and in the two thousands, two thousands. Okay, so when and all that not important, my friends. He's gone, go went gone, and uh, a very controversial man. Pretty much like you could say he was the. Donald Trump of Italy, or you could say, because he this guy came first, you could say Donald Trump was the Silvio Berlusconi of uh, America. This guy is a billionaire. Trump is a billionaire. This guy became prime minister. Trump became president. He was known for his multiple affairs and uh, lavish parties, and you know. All the scandal stuff and all that. So, so is Trump. You understand that? Yeah. He was famous for his bunga bunga parties. B u n g a bunga bunga. Read a little more about him. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, you will have you will have fun. Um, Norway's prime minister is Onas Stor, spelled J o n a s. J O N A S, J O N A S. Jonas Stor, S T O R E. Next, Sweden. Jonas Stor for Norway. Sweden's prime minister is Ulf Kristersson. Ulf, U L F. Ulf Kristersson. K R I S T E R R or single R double S E N. Kristersson. Italy, we you know Giorgia Meloni. We wrote her name a while ago. The Netherlands has a prime minister whose name is Mark Rutte. Mark Rutte, R-U-T-T-E, Rutte. Mark Rutte. Next, Denmark. 
Denmark's Prime Minister is Matty Fredriksson. Matty, M-E-T-T-E. M-E-T-T-E. Matty Fredriksson. F-R-E. D-E. R-I-K-S-E-N. Fredriksson. You know, except for Italy, all the, the remaining four have monarchs. Constitu they are all constitutional monarchies. They are all constitutional monarchies. Who is the new Director General of the Border Security Force? Nitin Agarwal. P.K. Srivastava, Pravin Kumar Srivastava. Look at choice one. Pravin Kumar Srivastava is a new, you know, is a new Chief Vigilance Commissioner. You could write New Chief Vigilance Commissioner of India. Pravin Kumar Srivastava, that is choice one, is a new Chief Vigilance Commissioner of India. Choice three, Pravin Sood is the Director, new Director of CBI. New director of the Central Bureau of Investigation. Choice four, Sanjay Kumar Mishra is a director of the Enforcement Directorate. Enforcement Directorate. Nitin Gupta is a chairperson of chairman of the Central Board of Direct Taxes (CBDT). Central Board of Direct Taxes. So that's what I would I usually do, as you know. I give a little lowdown on most of the choices if they are relevant. Which ministry scrapped around fifty-nine thousand units of small infrastructure projects that were under a central social economic development scheme called the Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karikram, the Ministry of Minority Affairs? Okay, then let's not just you know. Uh, focus on this. Let's look at the ministers running these shows. The Ministry of Minority Affairs is Smriti Irani. Smriti Irani. I R A N I. Smriti Irani. She holds another ministry, the Ministry of Women and Child Development. The Ministry of Women and Child Development. Women and Child Development. You know choices like Minister of Finance Nirmala Sitaraman, who also is the Minister of Corporate Affairs, Minister of External Affairs Subramaniam Jay Shankar, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs is Hardeep Singh Puri, Hardeep Singh Puri, Hardeep Singh Puri. He also is the Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, Petroleum and Natural Gas. Petroleum and natural gas. What about the Ministry of Home? Amit Shah. Amit Shah. He also is a Minister for Cooperation. Minister of Cooperation. Which football club won the UEFA Champions League 22-23 for the first time and secured a triple trophy by beauty, beating Inter Milan? Manchester City did this. Um, the UEFA Champions League um, features European clubs, my friends, and um, the winners Manchester City, runner up was Inter Milan of Italy. Manchester City, as you know, is a British club. Inter Milan is an Italian football club. Coming to the venue of the Champions League final, it was Istanbul in Turkey. Istanbul. Istanbul. Hmm. Okay, but who was the best player of the tournament? You could write this actually. You may get this question. Best player of tournament, Rodri, R O D R I, Rodri. That's the name. R O D R I, Rodri of Manchester City. Manchester City. The curry ishad mango, prominently grown in the Ankola Taluk, back the geographical indication, tagged from the GI registry. This mango is native to Karnataka, and as you know that this is uh, this GI has been given for mainly for the geographical part of it. That is where it's grown. The features that it has all come from where it's grown, basically. And this is in Uttar Kannada, North Kannada, North Kannada, Karnataka. See, there are a lot of mangoes that have GIs that they are pretty popular in, you know, grown in certain specific places. Like you have the Banganapalli mango. It comes to the village of Banganapalli in Andhra Pradesh. Banganapalli, that's one. You have Mahilabad 
மயிலாபாதி தசேரி தசேரி இஸ் அ லவ்லி கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஆம் வெரி ஜூசி தசேரி மயிலாபாதி தசேரி ஃப்ரம் உத்தரப்பிரதேஷ் தென் யூ ஹாவ் கீர் கேசர் கேஇஎஸ்ஆர் கீர் கீர் ஃபாரஸ்ட் யூனோ இன் குஜராத் சே கீர் கேசர் ஃப்ரம் குஜராத் ஸோ ஐம் நேம் த்ரீ மயிலாபாதி தசேரி ஃப்ரம் உத்தரப்பிரதேஷ் ஐ நேம்ட் பங்கனப்பள்ளி ஃப்ரம் ஆந்திரப்பிரதேஷ் தென் கீர் கேசர் ஃப்ரம் குஜராத் then there is this uh, alfonso mango from ratnagiri maharashtra plenty of these kinds of mangoes here okay oh mangoes are lovely to eat mango is a national fruit of india hmm the national vegetable of india is pumpkin p u m p k i n pumpkin the indian origin scientist joyita gupta was awarded the 2023 spinoza prize for her work on environmental safety boundaries and climate justice This prize is sponsored by the Netherlands. It's called the Dutch Nobel Prize. The Dutch Nobel Prize and she had been awarded this for you know her work on sustainable development how we can save guard our oceans our you know our environment and ensure that all development takes place in a sustainable way. And um she's also the co-convener or the co-chairperson of what is it called earth commission earth commission earth commission okay there we go you know there is a choice there switzerland i just wanted to that switzerland has no capital city it's one of the only two countries in the world to officially not have a capital to officially not have a capital that is in the constitution and in the government language there is no city that's deemed to be the capital of you know uh, you know legally deemed to be the capital of switzerland the other place is nauru n a u r nauru is a tiny country in the pacific ocean very tiny you know it's i think it's about 21 square kilometers so it's very tiny switzerland is about 84000 square kilometers but you know what switzerland's main city bern b e r n bern is where the government sits so de facto de jure de e d jure by law there is no capital but by the fact the gun that the government sits the president sits in a particular city has an office in a particular city that city is is now considered the capital and that place is bern b e r n bern so de facto by fact it is bern b e r n okay which country defeated india in the second edition of the 23 not 23 it should be 2021 23 it started in 2021 it's now that the final had come okay um, the world test championship final at the oval london in england oval is london england australia so you could write this 21 22 23 world test championship final at oval in london in london that's one two second part winner australia third part runner up india fourth part player of the match player of the final player of the final was uh, travis head h e a d head t r a v i s travis head h e a d travis head of australia he batted quite well fabulously well Travis said. Then, um, overall tournament, most runs in the tournament. Most runs in the tournament. There is this English batsman called Joe J O E Joe Root R O O T Root <laughs> Joe Root. I think he scored a little over four thousand runs. If I'm not wrong, it's four four zero five zero runs. Four zero five zero runs. You could write this four zero five zero runs. That's a phenomenal number of runs in two years. Uh, number two, most wickets in the tournament. Most wickets in the tournament. Most wickets. There is an Australian spinner called Nathan Leon. Nathan. on nathan some people call him nathan but nathan 
एन ए टी एच ए नेतन लियोन एल वाई ओ एन नेतन लियोन आई थिंक ही टूक वन थर्टी नाइन विकेट्स वन थ्री नाइन विकेट्स वन थ्री नाइन विकेट्स सी द करंट फाइनल आई मीन दैंपियनशिप दट स्टार्ट इन ट्वेंटी वन एंडेड इन ट्वेंटी थ्री द फाइनल टूक प्लेस इन ओवल लंडन फेर विल द फाइनल ऑफ द ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फाइव चैंपियनशिप यू नो हैपन In fact, the 23-25 already started with the Ashes between England and Australia, which the English team lost the first test actually recently by two wickets. You know, um, the final of the 23-25 ICC World Test Championship will be played in London, but at a different stadium called Lords L O R D apostrophe S Lords London. Okay, that's a lot of stuff, man. That's all from me Bharat Singh Jain have a lot of fun thank you for being here stay curious